Today on Rappler. Criticism against mandatory ROTC grow as D&D's Carlito Galvez Jr. claims it could cure mental health issues. The Supreme Court drops graft charges against Juan Ponce Enrile over the Coco Levy fund scam. Mining firm Alpay Philippines is under probe for the alleged destruction of marine resources in Sibuyan Island. The death toll from the Turkey-Syria earthquakes passes the 15,000 mark as Erdogan's government is besieged by relief problems. North Korea shows off more ICBMs during a nighttime parade. Twice members Sana, Momo, and Mina to make their debut as Japanese subunit Misamo. And rock band Eraserheads to go on a world tour in May. Proposals to make the Reserve Officers Training Corps or ROTC mandatory once more drew flack online after Defense Secretary Carlito Galvez claimed it would cure students' mental health issues. Proposals for mandatory ROTC have been certified as a priority measure by President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. and Vice President Sara Duterte. The keyword ROTC was among the top 10 Philippine trends on Twitter on Tuesday, February 7, as people shared their sentiments on Galvez's claim. Many social media users say ROTC is a quote-unquote waste of time, with Filipinos recounting having to spend their weekends exposed to the sun, saying it could have been better spent quote, resting or studying. Some users also say the skills learned from ROTC were useless despite having to spend money on quote, additional units and uniforms. It became optional in 2002 following the death of Mark Welson Chua, a University of Santo Tomas student who exposed corruption in his school's ROTC. The Supreme Court junks graft charges against Chief Presidential Legal Counsel Juan Ponce Enrile and other respondents in relation to the Coco Levy fund scam. In a 53-page decision, the SE says the case was dismissed on the grounds of Enrile's right to speedy disposition of cases. Aside from dismissing the case against Enrile, the SE also reverses and sets aside an ombudsman decision, which recommends the dismissal of a case against the respondent of the case on the ground of prescription, or the period within a legal action can be made against an alleged offense. Since the case was filed in 1990, other respondents Eduardo Juanco Jr., Jose Eliazar Jr., Maria Clara Lobregat, and Agosto Orosa have died before the case reached the final judgment. The High Court notes the case has been, quote, pending for over 30 years and says, quote, the passage of time should be weighed in favor of the respondents. The Department of Environment and Natural Resources orders its provincial office in Romblon to conduct an investigation into the alleged damage of seagrass and other marine resources by Altai Philippines Mining Corporation's exploration operations in Sibuyan Island. The DENR also orders the Provincial Environment and Natural Resources Office in Romblon to take legal action if warranted against APMC for reportedly cutting trees without the necessary permit. The mining company's permit to transport ore is also suspended. Seagrass is home to many marine organisms such as shrimps and sea urchins. It also provides nutrients to sea creatures such as dugongs, which have been sighted in Romblon waters. This is the first time the DENR's central office released a statement on the mining activities in Sibuyan Island since the last week of January when residents and anti-mining advocates started a human barricade to stop trucks from hauling samples of nickel ore from the island. The death toll from earthquakes that struck Turkey and Syria this week passes 15,000 on Thursday, February 9. Turkish President Tayyip Erdogan says operations were now working normally and promised no one would be left homeless. Rescuers are still finding some people alive, but many Turks complain of a lack of equipment, expertise, and support to rescue those trapped, sometimes even as they could hear cries for help. Many survivors in the disaster zone had slept in their cars or in the streets under blankets in the freezing cold, fearful of going back into buildings shaken by the magnitude 7.8 tremor. Similar scenes and complaints come from Syria, where the death toll had climbed to at least 2,950 by Wednesday. Syria's ambassador to the United Nations admits the government had a quote, lack of capabilities and lack of equipment, blaming more than a decade of civil war and Western sanctions. North Korea displays more intercontinental ballistic missiles or ICBMs than before and hints at a new solid fuel weapon during a nighttime parade. The country test launched dozens of advanced missiles last year despite United Nations resolutions and sanctions. Photos from state media outlet KCNA show as many as 11 Hwasong 17s, North Korea's largest ICBM, which are suspected to be able to strike nearly anywhere in the world with a nuclear warhead. Alongside these are what some analysts say could be a prototype of a new solid fuel ICBM and canister launchers. 
South Korea's foreign ministry criticizes North Korea for holding the event when it is facing a worsening food crisis. North Korea says its missile program and nuclear weapons development fall under its sovereign right to self-defense. The rumors are true, onces! Twice members Sana, Momo, and Mina are making their debut as Japanese subunit Misamo on July 26. Twice's Japanese agency Warner Music Japan announces the Japanese trio will release a mini-album consisting of six songs. It will also include the song Bouquet, which was recorded as an original soundtrack for the Japanese TV drama Liaison Children Heart Clinic. Before the official announcement, the trio teased the upcoming subunit through opening trailers and photos on Twice's official Japanese accounts. The announcement comes as Twice is set to make a Korean comeback with their 12th mini-album ready to be on March 10. The Misamo subunit also comes after fellow member Nayon released her solo album, Im Nayon, in June 2022. It isn't the Eraserheads' Huling El Bimbo after all, with the iconic rock band setting off on a world tour in May. Bassist Buddy Zabala confirms the news to Rappler and shares the tour dates and locations. The band will be making stops in the following cities across the United States and Canada. An ABS-CBN report says each show will be a unique two-hour concert featuring some of the band's signature songs as well as tracks that will be performed only in those venues. The foursome, known for hits like Ang Huling El Bimbo, Overdrive, Alapaap, and With a Smile, last played together in a reunion concert on December 22, 2022, which attracted some 75,000 concert goers. Before the reunion concert, members Buddy, Ali Buendia, Raymond Marasigan, and Marcos Adoro performed in their own separate bands. And that's today's wrap. I'm Nina Liu. Thank you for watching. Click the link below for the full story. Follow us on Rappler's YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok.